Hello and welcome to part two in our animal character series. In this episode, we're going to add on our jumping and attacking motion onto our wolf character so that when we jump, we are biting at the same time. This involves us manipulating the root motion a little bit and adding it into our inputs. So let's get started. Okay, here we are with our wolf character where we've got movement working with W, A, S, and D and with the mouse. So I can turn the mouse whilst he's moving to turn him around. Uh, and I can use W, A, S, and D to strafe left and strafe right as well. Um, so the thing I want to fix at the moment is the control rotation. At the moment, the control rotation and his movement rotation are very different. Um, so if I turn the mouse around really quickly, it does this sort of gliding thing backwards rather than a smooth turn backwards. So we need to fix that to allow him to turn a lot more in a circular motion rather than on the on the spot. And that's because we're using control rotation at the moment to move him forwards, which is this thing here. So this is going to be replaced actually with a brand new variable that we're making called movement rotation target. So I've made this new rotator. And this will be the main thing we're using for our forward vector. So let's just drag that out and plug that into our get forward vector into there. Okay. Uh, next we're going to do is we're going to, uh, after we've done add movement input, is there is an R interp2 to make this number grow gradually towards the control rotation. So that way it doesn't snap to the control rotation at all. We go R interp2, and on here we're going to go and do uh, the target as the control rotation, and as the current value will be our movement rotation target. Okay, so it should look like this. So what this is going to do is basically grow the number of movement rotation target towards whatever the control rotation is. It will make it towards that. And the delta time and interrupt speed go together to work out how fast it achieves that. So delta time we can put in as delta world seconds. And the interrupt speed is how quick it wants to go. So this will be a bit of tweaking to get more accurate to what we want. But let's start off with three and go from there. Uh, the return value from this we're going to split because we only want the your remember. And we're going to take the movement rotation out and set that. Again, split and put in the your there on its own. And we'll plug that in. So this is like a tick event, so it'll constantly be doing this and growing this num this rotation target towards the control rotation. So we'll hit compile and take a look at what that's achieved with our character. So as I turn around, nothing's going to happen. But if I move forwards and then turn my mouse, you can now see I've got a much bigger turning circle. So it's not turning on the spot. He is turning around properly. Okay, and we probably can turn it up a little bit more, turn it down a little bit more, tweak those numbers a little bit to get a more accurate uh, feel for what it should be. Okay. And we're going to go a bit further with this, and on the move forward here, we've got this going on, and on the move right, we're using control rotation still. We're going to get rid of this and just use our movement with rotation target instead and put it then in its place so now that's all reliant on the control rotation being interped a lot smoother this, these numbers will change greatly based upon what animal you're doing and what speed they move as well so do bear that in mind when messing about with those things okay Right, so the next thing we want to do here is we're going to work on the jump mechanic. So let's go ahead and set that up. In the animations folder here, we've got jump bite and jump bite root motion. So let's take a look at both of these and see what we're dealing with. We've got jump bite, which is an in-place animation of him doing a jump bite. And here we've got the root motion version of his jump bite. Now, for an animal like this, the root motion may actually suit us a lot better because they would actually go to um a place that is kind of fixed you don't want too much control over them so root motion may suit this a lot a lot better so let's use this one we're going to go down to enable root motion for it and then hit save and i'm going to tell it to be a 
uh, montage because it's literally just one animation it's not like a loop of it, it it's just going to jump forwards so we'll do this and do a create and a montage and uh, I've done the wrong one. Hold on, let's delete that one. We want to use this one. Create and a montage. Okay, so now we've got this animation montage, which is using the root motion version of the jump by it. So then all I want to do is go to my animation blueprint, go to the animation graph, and in its place here, we want to put in a slot to handle this. So slot, default slot, and then plug that into the result. So when I jump, it's going to play the montage animation there. And this works well for things that are like this, where the jump is enclosed into one animation. Makes it a lot quicker and easier to set up. Okay, so um, let's go into our character here and handle the jump. So let's search for a jump. And get action event jump. And on here, we're going to tell it to play that root motion animation. So I'm going to do... Um, Mesh, play montage, and we're going to tell it to play the jump bite root montage. Now, this does have a side effect, and we'll go through and show you that now. Um, so, here's my character. I push spacebar to jump. Okay, like so. Obviously, his speed is a lot slower when I'm running. This is more of like a walking speed maybe. So we need to fix the speed of the bite. And also just how far he goes too. So let's tweak both of those things uh, all together. So let's go into the jump by it to root motion and on here we're going to give it a bit more distance and a bit more height so for this to make this a little bit easier we're going to go to enable root motion and we're going to look at the root here and we're going to add an additive track to this so we're going to increase the number that it moves by so let's just go back here you can see here the root is just literally going across no problem so let's go and add a key with the root in mind you should see root at the bottom here with additive layer track and then we're going to go right to the end of the animation where he lands up there and give that a much farther distance for it to go and then hit key so the whole thing will travel a lot farther okay and because it's traveling a lot a larger distance it should look a lot faster as well so with that done we're going to hit apply and then see how this looks in game Oh, I forgot to enable root motion back on. Let's turn that back on. Uh, enable root motion. There we go. And let's play that again. And hit spacebar, and away I go. So as you can see, the speed is a lot more in line with what the speed of their character is doing. However, if I want this to be a walking speed, so I'm going to switch over to my controller now, where we've got a walking sort of speed for the character. I push jump. The bit extreme we don't want it to jump that much that's quite a lot um so what we're going to do about that well we're going to have two jumps so let's just right click on this and do duplicate and for this one we're going here i'm going to remove the track here so we're going to do remove selected track and close that we then want to change which one we're going to jump with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the montage for our jump and add the second one to this one as well. So I've got the fast one here, the slow one here, and I'm going to set up a different section for each of these. So this is default, so that's already done for us. Then over here, we're going to add another montage section by right clicking and doing slow jump. Okay. Then we want to go to the sequence manager to handle the sections. So go to montage sections and you'll see the sequence of default goes into slow jump. We want to clear this so they're two separate sections. Then hit save. 
So you'll play one like this, the other one like this. Okay, and then we go back to our jump. Now the jump is going to determine our starting section based upon our speed of our character. So we can either do a slow jump or a default jump. Uh, so let's take a look at our character's speed. So we're going to get velocity. And from here, we're going to take this vector length. And then from that, we're going to say if this is greater than, uh, let's say, 300. Let's say, yeah, 350 actually. Greater than 350. Then we're going to select a different section. So starting section here, do select. And plug in that index there. And if this is true, it should be the default speed. So that'd be default. And if it's false, it would be the slow jump. And hit compile and save. So let's test that out here. So here's going to be a full speed jump. And that looks fun. And if I go to a walking one with the controller, again, suits it a lot better. Okay. If I go full pelt, it looks good. And that brings us to the end of the intro to our animal character series. What I would like to hear from you, though, is in the comment section, what kind of animals would you like to see being made playable? And what kind of interactions would you like them to have? This is quite important because every animal is different. Maybe you want them to fly, swim, crawl, eat, sleep, whatever it is. You can let me know in the comments below and we'll go through and explain how it is set up. If you want to watch all my videos early, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lely where your support gets you access to all my videos before anyone else as well as access to Discord channels and many other benefits too like votings and early access to game tests. Thanks very much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.